So imagine walking down a quiet street when suddenly an armed robber jumps out from nowhere. Please emphasize the adjective armed, which means this person, this armed robber is more powerful than you are, okay? So this armed robber jumps out, points a gun at your head and demands you to give them all your valuables, okay? Now, terrified, terrified for your life, afraid, scared, you hand everything over. Your wallet, your watch, your phone, everything. The robber takes it all and then turns and says, you know what? You know you gave me all these things. You gave all these valuables to me of your own free will, yeah? You're like, okay? He's like, okay, I gave you a choice to either give me your valuables or get a bullet in your head. Hmm. Now, <laughs> you and I both know that this is not free will. It's coercion. You were forced to make a choice but under duress with your life hanging in the balance. Now, does this analogy sound familiar? That's what the story of free will in the Bible sounds like. Yeah, absurd. Now, I came across a video on TikTok a few days ago where a Nigerian pastor spoke passionately about God giving us free will. You know, I, I sat and began to ponder again on this deep philosophical and theological dogma and fallacious reasoning. I mean, I was like, let me critically think about this. Now, we are told that Adam and Eve had a choice. But how much of a choice, how much of a real choice did they have? Now, let's look closer at the story of Adam and Eve, okay? God places them in the Garden of Eden tells them not to eat from the tree of knowledge. Please emphasize knowledge. And then he leaves them alone with the serpent. Now, serpent was a being far more corny, knowledgeable, and manipulative than they could ever be. Who does that? Who tries to impede people from getting knowledge? The answer is simple. Someone who wants to control you. Yeah someone who wants to subjugate you. So this point of view highlights how religious texts, including the Bible, were co-opted during uh, the colonial period to rationalize the exploitation of African people, the subjugation of African people, and deny them access to knowledge, freedom, and autonomy. But we'll get back to that, okay? Now, let's go back to the story. So God, who is omnipresent and omniscient, all-knowing he knows everything he sat he watched everything unfold he knew the serpent will deceive them right he knew they will eat the fruit and he knew exactly what the consequences would be so was that really a fair test of free will knowing the serpent was a being far more knowledgeable than they were now think about it okay Adam and Eve were innocent, completely unaware of good and evil, according to the Bible. They had no knowledge whatsoever, right? They even lacked the wisdom to truly understand the consequences of their actions because they were not given any knowledge at all because the Bible said uh, God forbade them from eating from the fruit of knowledge, good and evil, so they didn't even know what was good or evil. Meanwhile, the serpent, equipped with knowledge and trickery, convinced them to disobey and where was God watching it all happen he sat and watched it all happen he could have intervened but he didn't he let the deception unfold knowing the result was going to be harsh so if God is truly omniscient right then he would have known the outcome of Adam and Eve's actions before they even took them and this begs the question it raises the question about why he would place them in a situation where he knew they would fail. It's like he, they were destined to fail. Now, the question is, 
was that genuine free will or were Adam and Eve destined to fail? Were they set up to fail? Even the choice they made to disobey, the choice they made to disobey God was not even made in a vacuum. It was influenced by the serpent. So again, was it truly free will if they were swayed by a deceiver who were more knowledgeable than they were? So the decision was not even theirs. Now, let's be critical here, okay? It's time we started asking questions as Africans because the power dynamics between the serpent and the humans were entirely unequal. An innocent pair being outwitted by a more knowledgeable being while, while an, an all-powerful God sat and watched silently. So if free will is supposed to mean a meaningful informed choice, then this situation seems anything but fair. The presence of the serpent and God's foreknowledge seem to complicate the idea that Adam and Eve had freedom of choice. They didn't. And before we talk about the harsh punishment they received, right, let's fast forward to the New Testament where God offers humanity salvation through Jesus. Let me sip from my coffee. But here's the catch. You either accept Jesus or you burn in hell for eternity. <laughs> Again, is that really a choice? Now, if the alternative to accepting Jesus is eternal torment, it doesn't feel like much of an option at all. It feels more like a coercion than a meaningful voluntary decision. Now, imagine being told you are free to choose, but if you make the wrong choice, you will suffer forever, right? That's not free will. That's coercion. It's like the robber with the gun giving you a choice, but making the consequences of saying no unbearable. You see? And then we also have to ask, why would a loving God create hell in the first place? Why create a system where the stakes are so high that your eternal destiny hangs on just one decision, accept Jesus or suffer for eternity, right? Now, if God is truly loving, why would he allow such a system to exist? Think about it, people. Think about it, Africans. Now, think about all the people who have lived in cultures and places where they had never or they never heard of Jesus. So tell me, are they doomed simply because of when and where they were born? Some who were even born before Jesus. And if that is the case, then the choice between Jesus and hell feels like an ultimatum than an exercise of free will. And now the larger question is, why would God create a system where humanity needs to be redeemed at all? Why would he create such system? If God is omniscient and knew that humanity would fall into sin, why create a world in which such a fall was possible? And the silliest of them all is why set up a scenario where salvation requires the death of Jesus, who is, according to the Bible, both God and man. So Jesus is coming to save you from the hell he and his father created. He would die for you to save. Why, why would a loving God require such a brutal and painful sacrifice in the first place? Couldn't God have simply forgiven humanity without the need for such suffering? So the idea of free will, again, as presented in these biblical stories and ignorantly preached by our gullible pastors, mostly Nigerian pastors, becomes really complicated and unfounded. It does not make sense. Now, in the Garden of Eden, the odds were stacked against Adam and Eve from the start. There was no option. Now, in the New Testament also, the consequences of rejecting Jesus seem impossibly harsh. You see that? Now, in both cases, the concept of free will feels more like a formality with limited options and extreme consequences. So how is that free will? Perhaps it's time we start to think critically about these stories and ask ourselves whether the concept of free will as presented in this narrative is as fair and clear as we have been led to believe. <laughs>